Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. You know where that is. Listen, I want to talk to you about a little something. I want to ask you a question. You listening? <clears throat> get your coffee, get good and comfortable. I want to I want you to picture something with me. I want you to picture something with me. If I was sitting up here popping a cigarette every few minutes and drinking and boozing it up, hollering at my kids, you know, y'all get the F on out of here, you get on my nerves, and I'm up here on, on YouTube trying to preach the gospel. Every other word is a cuss word. <clears throat> Mixed in with a few holy words here and there. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I tell you, I don't, I don't care. I don't give an F what you do. And I don't blah, blah, blah. And then hubby walks in the room and I'm hooping and hollering at him. Man, what the hell the matter with you? Blah, 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 blah. You would look at me like, y'all got to see this fool on this YouTube. She, This is a joke. Look at her. Now, why would you think I was a joke? Hmm? Why would you not take me seriously? I'm on YouTube trying to spread the gospel. Just said a few cuss words and bawled my kids out, bawled my husband out. I'm sitting up here puffing on a cigarette, drinking a little wine. How would you feel about that? You wouldn't take me seriously. Go on and say it. You would not take me seriously. I don't care how liberal you think you are. Just like if you went to a hospital preparing for surgery and your sur your surgeon walks in your room hours before while they're prepping you and he's staggering <clears throat> been out partying all night smells of tobacco his hair is disheveled he looked like he hadn't had a bath in two weeks and you're looking at him like I know you ain't planning on cutting up on me like that. Why not? The man knows what he's doing. Doesn't he? So what's your argument? Well, the doctor's judgment would be off. His timing would be off. He's not even clean. I wouldn't want him cutting my body open. He's the best in the, in the state. But you still don't want him cutting you open. Well, my question to you. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I got another one. Okay. You getting in the car with, I'm talking to you kids now, you getting in the car with your mother or father or your guardian or your friends. And they're so loaded, they're flying all over the street. You be curling up in that back seat, hollering, talking about, pull over, I'll walk home, pull over. You might even start crying because you know the inevitable is about to happen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hmm? Do you trust because they're your friend? You gonna sit there and be quiet and chill and laugh and joke with them? Or you gonna have some tears streaming down your face hoping you get out of that car alive? Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you something, baby. The same way you can't trust your parents when they're in that condition or your friends, whatever. Or the same way you can't trust the surgeon. The same way you can't trust him to cut you open and be sanitary and mind be sharp, timing be right on, wisdom and his you know, skills really be on it because he's doing an intricate surgery on your body. The same way you wouldn't trust him, you probably jump up, say, no, you're not going to work on me. I'll wait another two weeks before I let you touch me. And the same way that you would be laughing, cracking up, and and eating popcorn saying, oh, this is a real, this is a real funny show here. This chick thinks somebody wants to accept the Lord and listen to her delivery. She's so, she's so uh, full of tobacco and so full of wine. She just cussing everybody out and thinks somebody want to hear that. How do you think God feels? And he's holy when he looks at you. Some of you are pastors preaching in the pulpit, shacking with your mama, shacking with your daddy. 
Yeah, baby. That's my man. Shackley. Sleeping, slipping, sliding. Sleeping here, sleeping there. Slip under this cover one night, slip under that cover the next. Half the women in the congregation, boy, you getting it on. You got you a, a whole slew of women to hop from one to the other. And they so, they so silly and desperate, they let you do it. They fall for the for the line of bull you handing them. Some of the stuff I hear in some other countries that they pull on women, it's ridiculous. And these people are sitting up here thinking that it's okay to be that way. You're heading up a church and you're screwing everything that has a skirt or that has a zipper. And you just have to can't help it. You just got to have it. And God just got to understand. You just crazy like that. But he's merciful. You're merciful God. Oh yeah. He's real merciful. <clears throat> God ain't no sucker. Come on. He's not stupid. Then you turn around. And you sit up there. And you play with the money. Okay, let's get off of that. Let's get with y'all regular folks that ain't heading up no church. But you're heading up a corporation. You're heading up a corporation. God's looking, but you ain't fearing. You ain't worried about him. You worried about that almighty dollar. That's your God. So, you hook up with some other business guys that got a good business deal going. And they're selling dope. And they're making bank. And you, and you cash in on the bucket. And you say, yeah, I want some of that. And you say, well, you know, I'll do this for a hot minute. It ain't like I'm out there doing it. I'll do it for a hot minute. I might as well make money on somebody else doing something wrong. I ain't doing it. Fast money. Big money. You really think God is okay with that? For God, that's that's called blood money. Too many people are being hurt, being drawn and suckered in because of your greed. Yeah, yeah, you think you don't have anything to do with it because you live in an ivory tower. Oh, but baby, you're going to be one of the main ones when God passes out the bills. You're going to have a big one to pay ain't going to be sweet and you won't be able to afford it. Some of you are going through a lot of changes. You work for the Drug and Food Administration. You're doing all this investing. And the Food and Drug Administration are in bed together so they grease each other's palms. So they keep each other rich and fat and greasy. Oh yeah, living easy. While folks are dying, getting sick. And you know it. You know that what you're doing is not kosher. You know it. But the money is just too sweet. You just can't give up that good stuff, baby. You got to have the money. So you bow. You bow and give give uh, homage to this money. And you bow lower. And you stoop lower. And you get so low. You get so low. That you make some of the demons from hell. Look like little school kids. For the money. You guys to stop it before it's too late. There's a friend of mine, she used to always say, before it's everlastingly too late. That's when it's really too late, y'all. You have got to really do a, a, a reassessment of what you're doing with your life. How are you treating people? Who are you stepping over to get to the next position? Who are you lying on? Whose credit are you taking? 
Somebody really good works up under you, and you're standing up there grinning so wide that you that they can't tell the difference between your mouth and a behind because you're sitting up there brown nosing. So you can get all the brownie points and all the money you can get when you know doggone well you didn't come up with the idea of the person you've been chewing out every day and making life miserable for is the one that got you the credit. And you didn't give that person a bit of credit. You took it all for yourself and wouldn't even give them a, right, a raise when they got through giving you a whole bunch of bonuses. What kind of mess is that? You know, you guys, you think that you're supposed to be able to get away with everything you can get away with. Party over here, party over there, party, party, party everywhere. Party over here, party over there, party, party, party everywhere. Hey, hey. And you really having a ball with the money and you smelling the money and you spending the money and oh, you're screwing the money. Yeah, that's what you're doing, screwing it. And you think it's okay. Cause you party and you spend the money. Hey, and you got a baby over here and a baby over there. And you can pick and choose whoever you want to use because you got the booze and you got everything that they need to use because you got the money, honey. Ooh. And you have stooped so low to get it. I don't know what it is. I, I, I just don't get how you can do some of the things knowing that you're ruining it for other people and, and keeping other people back who should have been way further because you, you don't care enough about them to make sure they get something out of it too. They're sweetening your pie, but you ain't doing it in return. They, they make everything good for you and you make everything worse for them. Yeah, because you got it like that. Yeah, baby, I'm the boss. I'm the big man up in here. Well, all I can say is repent. That's all I can say. And I hope and pray that God grabs your heart and shows you yourself in such a way that you want to spew yourself out and beg God to forgive you and do right by all those people you've done wrong for so long. Please think about that. Party time is over now. It's really time for you to think and repent. Please. For your soul's sake. For all those people whose lives you're sucking up. For the sake of the almighty dollar. Well, I think I've said about all I'm going to say. Pimping the people. Chewing them up and spitting them out. I'm going to ask you a little guilt trip. How do you sleep at night? When you look at yourself in the mirror, do you look long and strong? Because if you're not getting sick when you look at yourself in the mirror, you're in a bad place. I hope and pray God shows you just how he feels. Because one day, you're going to get a warning, and it may be the only warning you get, because God is kind enough to do that, even to people like you. If you don't take heed to that warning, baby, I would not want to be you with all your money in a million years. You hear me? No, I wouldn't. Think about that. God bless you. Please give your heart to the Lord. It's not worth it. 